Good evening, students. In the last class, we have discussed about the phylum, Arctophyllum, and the Lida. Okay, where we have studied about the phylum Polyphyla, phylum Cilindrata, phylum Platyhelminthes, Ascelminthes, and Anelia. Next phylum which we are going to study is up till last class we have studied about worms where we have under Platyhelminthes we have studied about worms and asking we have studied again about the worms, round worm and then in January now we have studied a group of worms like earthworm about we have studied leeches, the characteristic features of earthworm and leeches Coming to the next one, next class or next phylum or group of animals we will be studying is about phylum Arthropoda Phylum Arthropoda. Now, why they have got the name as Arthropoda? Where Arthros means jointed. The word Arthros is nothing but jointed. And Poda. The word Poda is nothing but appendages. Okay, Poda is nothing but appendages. Arthros is jointed and Oda is appendages. Since the um, group of animals or organism belonging to phylum Arthropoda will be having jointed appendages. That means the group of uh, organisms here that is uh, insects, they all the insects come under phylum Arthropoda. Okay, phylum Arthropoda. Word phylum. Why we call it? Why they have got the name is Arthropoda? Because Arthros is nothing but jointed, and Poda is nothing but appendages. Since the organism belonging to this phylum, okay, they have jointed appendages. They have got the name as Arthropoda. Okay, and which animals, or which organisms come under phylum Arthropoda? Which are the organisms? The organisms that is insects. All the insects become under phylum Arthropoda. Insects come under phylum Arthropoda. Since there are number of species, when we say insect, there are number of species. This Arthropoda, we have been two thirds of all species, both the organisms present in the biosphere, they belong to phylum Arthropoda. That is why we say it is the largest phylum. Arthropoda, it is the largest phylum. Okay, because here the number of species belonging to phylum Arthropoda that is more, nearly two thirds of the species, they belong, that is nearly 70 percent. Okay, uh, they belong to phylum Arthropoda. Is it clear? Now, coming to the next one. What are the characteristic features? Coming to the basic characteristic feature, we know they have organ system. The basic characteristic feature of phylum Arthropoda is they have organ system level of organization. What is the meaning of organ system? Group of organ together we form one organ system. Okay, group of organ together we have an organ system and they perform a physiological activity. We call it as organ system. And symmetry, symmetry, if you remember, there are different types of symmetry. Okay, that is asymmetrical, bilaterally symmetrical, and radially symmetrical. Coming to arthropoda, now if I take butterfly. When I divide a butterfly through central axis, do I get identical left and right? Yes, I will be getting identical left and right. That is why we see they have, what type of symmetry is it? It is always a bilateral symmetry. Okay, it is bilateral symmetry. That means when I divide an insect through a central axis, it will be dividing into left and right. So, what type of symmetry it is? It is bilateral symmetry. Is it clear? Okay. Then we have coelom. Okay. Here also the organism possess body cavity. Okay. They have a body cavity. That is why we say they are coelomates. What are they? 
the possessor body cavity that is why we call them as coelomates that means they, the body cavity is present okay and that body cavity is lined by what it is always lined by a mesoderm okay so we say they are coelomates is it clear then we have the germinal layer here the germinal layer has three germinal layer so they are if they are three germinal layer then we call it as triploblastic animals okay, they are triploblastic animals their body layer they have generally three layers that is why we say triploblastic okay this is about their basic level of organization okay what is basic level of organization we have organ system level of organization organs clump together to form an organ system then when we divide an organism to central axis it will be divided into left and right so the symmetry is bilateral symmetry then we have a body cavity and that body cavity is filled with this it is having a cavity which which is lined by what mesoderm so we call it as coelomates and then they are germinal layer it is divided into three layers that is why we say they are triploblastic okay that means they have three germinal layer is it clear okay now since it has organ system okay, they will be having a well developed organ system it might be digestive system it might be circulatory system it might be respiratory system or it might be excretory system since they are having, having the organ system they all will be having this uh, all system in clear okay now let's see one by one that is what type of digestive system they have or what type of respiratory system do they have or what type of digestive system they have okay we will look at one by one coming to the first one we have digestive system we have digestive system we have a complete digestive system okay now if you remember in the first class in the second class probably i have told you that if an organism's body has two different opening one as mouth and the other as anus if it has two different opening then we call that type of digestion as complete digestion if i take example of cockroach now it has mouth and anus two different opening hence what type of digestive system it has it has a complete type of digestive system okay here in arthropoda in arthropoda the digestive system okay since it has organ system they will be having a all the organ system clear correct then we have digestive system which is it is a complete digestive system what is complete digestive system it has mouth and anus okay mouth and anus is present and mouth and anus are separate it is not one common opening they have two different opening one as mouth and the other as anus so we say the type of digestive system here is complete digestive system okay then coming to the respiratory system here when we say arthropoda the few of the organism is living in water so their respiratory system will be different they will be living in they are aerial okay that is insect which is capable of flying that means their respiratory system is different so under kind of arthropoda we have different respiratory structures now coming to respiratory system respiratory system there is a respiratory system there are different types of respiratory system now if i take an example of prawn have you heard about prawn it is a crustacean in the local language they say it sigiri okay in kannada they say it as sigiri or prawn okay it says uh, it is a seafood which we will be eating okay seafood that is prawns this prawn they have yes this prawn they have respiratory structure called as gills they respire through gills since they live in water okay since they live in aquatic or they live in water they have a respiratory structure that is gills they respire through gills then if i take an example of scorpion scorpion and spider 
If I take an example of spider, they also belong to phylum Arthropoda, but their respiratory structure is different. They have their respiratory structure called as book gills. In detail about their structure, we will be studying in our first POC, but just you should know which are the different respiratory structure. Prawn, they have a respiratory structure that is gills, and in case of insects like scorpion or spider, okay, they will be having a respiratory structure and that is book gills. Then we have the organisms like king crab. King crab. This king crab they have a respiratory structure called as book lungs which is similar to lungs that is book lungs where their respiratory structure is like an open book okay it is like an open book that is why we say book lungs okay it is called as book lungs then we have next or next organisms here where for example if I take all the insects I have told you arthropoda they are nothing but insects if I take insects as an example the respiratory structure of insects they, call, they have a elongated tube like structure and that is called as trachea the respiratory structure they have a elongated tube like structure and that structure is called as trachea I have told you under phylum arthropoda since they have a different habitat they have a variety of habitat they have a different respiratory structure like in case of prawns they have a respiratory structure that is gills gills you have heard where will be heard you have where you have heard about gills generally in fishes or pisces they have a respiratory structure called as gills here in case of arthropoda we have prawns they belong belong to phylum arthropoda and they live in where do the prawns live they are aquatic okay that is why their respiratory structure is gills then we have insects like scorpion and the spider now what is their respiratory structure their respiratory structure is book gills they respire through book gills okay structure like scorpion and spider they respire through book gills okay where the gill like structure which is present in the form of arrangement of pages in the books okay and in case of king crab what type of respiratory structure do they have the respiratory structure is called as book lungs where it, ha it has a structure like open book we have a lungs like structure which appears to be bo open book like structure an example we have king crab and in insects they have a elongated tube like structure that is trachea and the respiration is tracheal respiration is it clear this is about the different <laughs> respiratory structures then coming to the next one that is circulatory system in arthropoda what type of circulatory system do they have or what type of circulation do they have in case of arthropodans In case of arthropodans, they have the respiratory structure that is, they have open type of circulation. Okay, mainly under circulation, we have two types of circulation one is open type and under closed type. In the higher organism, generally under vertebrates or in under vertebrates or under the chordates, they show close type of circulation and the lower organism like arthropoda, mollusca, they generally have open type of circulation. Now what is this open type of circulation? Here in this case the blood is pumped outside the heart. The blood is pumped outside the heart. Correct? By the heart the blood will be pumped. And the blood which is pumped outside the heart, which is in direct contact, that is in direct contact with the cells and the tissues. Now, I, in, for example, if I take a 
beaker and if I place ice cubes on it, this is the body, consider this is the body, these ice cubes consider it is cells or tissues. Now, if I pour a juice to this beaker, what happens? The ice will get in direct in contact with the juice, correct? Ice is in direct contact with the juice. That type of cell, for example, consider this is a blood, this is a body and these are cells and tissues. When you pour the blood, when you pour, when the blood is pumped outside the heart, if these ice cubes or the cells and tissues, if they are in direct contact, then we call it as open type of circulation. If, for example, we have to, I have told you no type of circulation. If there is a tube present, and if you are pouring the blood along this tube or the straw-like structure, if you are pouring the blood along that tube, then it is flowing in a closed space. That type of circulation is called as closed type of circulation. Now, in case we do not want this closed type of circulation, we just want open type of circulation. What is open type of circulation? When you pump the blood out, when the heart pumps the blood outside the heart, and if the cells and tissues of the body, the body cells and tissues are in direct contact with that blood, then we call it as open type of circulation. Okay, what is open type of circulation? When the blood is pumped outside the heart and if the cells and tissues are in direct contact with the blood then we call it as open type of circulation. Okay, arthropodans they show open type of circulation. Now, where does this blood move? Here, I have told you they have a body cavity. Okay, they have a cilio. Now consider this is the body and here the blood flows. And here the blood is present in the coelom, that is a body cavity. So we call it as hemocene. Hemocene. Okay, that means in the body cavity, in that space, the blood is filled here. Okay, so that is why we call it as hemocene. Here the blood a heart pumps the blood and that is in direct contact with the cell side tissues. How does the blood flow? The blood flows in the space, in the body cavity. We know the arthropods they have a body cavity, and in that body cavity, the blood is present. So we call that body cavity which is filled by blood as hemocene. Is it clear? Okay. Then coming to the next one, that is we have studied about the jointed appendages then I told you they are the largest phylum then we have studied about the basic level of organization then we have studied about digestive, respiratory and circulatory system now coming to the next system that is excretory system ok excretory system for the purpose of excretion for the purpose of excretion arthropods, especially in case of insects they have a, for example this is a excretory tube okay, or they are elementary canal on that elementary canal they will be having number of fibers like structures what do they have? number of fibers like structure and what is that structure called as? it is called as malphigian tubules it is called as malphigian tubule ok which is the excretory structure now? they have in insects, the excretory structure present is malphigian tubule. Is it clear? Excretory structure present is malphigian tubule. Okay. Now, coming to the next one, that is regular action. Okay, the reproductive structure. In case of arthropodans here, the male and the female, they are separate. Okay, they are separate. They are not same. They are separate. And here, reproduction takes place by sexual means. Okay, that is by the fusion of gametes in case of arthropoda. Okay, and coming to the last part is their habitat. Where do these organs of insects live? They might be terrestrial or some are aquatic. What is their habitat? Their habitat, some are terrestrial and some are aquatic some are terrestrial and some are aquatic okay, some are terrestrial and some are aquatic that is your habitat this is about finding arthropoda
okay phylum arthropoda we have studied what is your main feature this is very very important phylum because you are even in your first puc it is repeated question as phylum arthropoda it is why they got the name as phylum arthropoda where arthros is jointed and poda is appendages and which organism belonging to phylum arthropoda are generally insects and they are the largest phylum okay we have different examples because it is a largest phylum based on their habitat based on their function we have different examples in simple form now for time being you can keep two examples in mind one is first example you can write king crab and the scientific name is limulus king crab the scientific name is limulus and next example you can write any mosquito example like aedes have you heard about aedes it is a scientific name so you are supposed to underline Then you have Anopheles, Anopheles, and you can give example of silkworm. The silkworm they also belong to phylum Arthropoda. The scientific name is Bombyx, and common name is silkworm. These are few example of phylum and Arthropoda. Okay, we are we have been studying in detail about phylum Arthropoda. Next we have phylum Echinodermata. Okay, we'll study about Echinodermata. Then we'll be studying about the Mollusca. These are important phylums in detail about the characteristic features and what are their subdivisions. All that we'll be studying in your first PUC. But you should know before you come to first PUC, you should know their basic characteristic feature. These are compulsory to know the basic basic characteristic feature of phylum Arthropoda. Now coming to next one that is phylum Echinodermata. Okay, we have studied about phylum Arthropoda. Next we have. Coming to phylum Echinodermata. Yes, why we are why we call them as Echinodermata? Where Echino is nothing but spiny skin. Okay, what is spiny? They be having sharp skin. They be having spine-like structure. They be having needle-like structure in their body. That is why we call it as echino. What is the word echino means? What does echino mean? Echino is nothing but spiny. Okay. What is spiny? They be having needle-like structure, or they have spine-like structure. Spine-like structure in their body. We call it as spiny. Echino is nothing but spiny. And derma. You know. If you have any skin infection, whom do you visit? You visit dermatologist. That means skin. Okay. Here, the organism belonging to phylum Echinodermata, they have spiny skin. They have spiny skin in the body. Okay. Since they have a spiny skin in the body, they have got the name as Echinodermata. What does Echino word Echinodermata means? Echino is nothing but spiny, and derma is nothing but skin. Since they have a spiny skin to body, okay, their body is having smaller spine-like structure. They have a spiny skin to body. We call them as phylum Echinodermata. Okay. Now coming to the 
characteristic feature. Here, Echinodermatans, they are habitat mainly. They are exclusively marine. What is the meaning of exclusively marine? That means they are found only in sea water. Okay, they are found only in sea water. Okay, phylum, Echinoderma. Echino is spiny and derma is skin. This means your body has that spine like skin. We call it as Echinoderma. Okay, and their habitat, where exactly they live? They are they live in the marine water or sea water. Okay. They are exclusively marine. They are found in water, that too in the sea water. Okay. Now, coming to the next one, they are basic level of organization. They are basic level of organization. They have organ system level of organization. Okay, organ together in forms an organ system. They have organ system level of organization and they are symmetric. Here, in case of Echinodermata, they have larval stage, okay, that is younger stage, which will change their self into adult. Okay, they have larval and the adult stage. In case of Echinodermata, they are adult. Adult Echinodermata, they show radial symmetry. What is the meaning of radial symmetry? Now, example for Echinodermata, I will starfish. Starfish is an example for echinodermata. Now what is this radial symmetry? When I divide an organism through central axis, if I divide an organism through central axis, in any plane, if I divide this in this plane, I will get an equal half. If I will divide this organism in this plane, again I will be getting equal half. If I divide the organism in this plane, again I will get equal half. If I divide this organism in this plane, again I will be getting equal half. That means, in any plane, if I divide an organism through central axis, if I get equal half, then that type of symmetry is radial symmetry. Okay? Here, if I know the omega, what type, till now we have seen, that is, from the Lachyelminthes, Ascyelminthes, Enolita, Arthropoda. What type of symmetry these four showed? They showed bilateral symmetry. And Cylindrata they showed radial symmetry. Even Echinodermata, final Echinodermata, what type of symmetry does it show? It shows a radial symmetry. Okay, that means if I divide an organism in any plane, if I get equal half, then that type of symmetry is radial symmetry. Is that clear? Then, they are silo. They are silo mates. They also have a body cavity. They are silo mates. They also have a body cavity. And they are also triploblastic organisms. They are also triploblastic organisms. Now, coming to those final echinodermatons, how in case of porifera? Okay, they have water canal system. That means, since they are aquatic, water used to move inside the body, it used to get circulated inside the body. Am I right? Similarly, in case of final echinodermata or organism belonging to echinodermata, they have a water vascular system. That means, their body also receives water. Okay, the water enters the body and it gets circulated along. There is a canal system present. Okay, water uh, radiating canal. Okay, for example, consider this is organism and along the path they will be having a canal. The water will be moving along that canal like how the fan rotates. Okay, how fan has wings. Similarly, inside they will be having canals. When the water enters, if the fan will be moving, when you pour a water, what happens? It gets circulated. Correct? Similarly, in this animals also, when the water enters, along the canal it circulates. And that type of canal system is called as water vascular system here the water then circulates along the canals along the radiating canals in the arms of echinodermatons and that type of system we call it as water vascular system now since they have organ system they will be having different type of respiratory strength circulatory excretory structures correct in case of echinodermata they have a complete digestive system. Complete digestive system. Complete 
need to digest your system that we consider this is a, this is a starfish here they will be having anus in the dorsal side and in the ventral side they have mouth here the food enters and here the food exits okay that is why they have mouth and anus two different opening we call it as complete digestive system now coming to their circulatory system they do not have a well developed circulatory system because they have water vascular system the, when the water circulates that is that itself act as a circulatory system okay and excretion also takes place along with the digestion okay when the water leaves the body the excreted product also leaves okay and coming to the next one that is uh, respiration here they have a specialized structure small feet like structure you may call it a smaller feet like structure which is present in the canals or the arms we call it as tube feet what do we call it as ever excretion we have tube feet by excretion we have tube feet that i am saying the locomotion and respiration okay and the organisms belonging to phylum echinodermatins are starfish starfish belong to phylum echinodermata okay starfish belongs to phylum echinodermata or uh, starfish is also called as astreus scientific name is astreus and then we have sea urchin sea urchin okay all this belong to phylum echinodermata and echinodermata i repeat and echinodermata they have spiny skinned body their body will be having small spicules or the spines like structure that is why they have got the name as echinodermatins they are habitat they are exclusively marine they live in the sea water okay they live in the sea water yes sea cucumber is also example correct sea cucumber someone has commented that sea cucumber it also belongs to phylum echinodermata okay coming to the next one basic level of organization i have told you what level they have organ system level of organization and symmetry in case of adult echinodermata what type of symmetry does it shows it shows radial symmetry then see no they have the see their cilomates they have a body cavity and that body cavity is serve uh, helps in circulating the water mainly here that is why we say they are cilomates and their body has three germinal layers which are the three germinal layers present that is outer ectoderm middle mesoderm and inner endoderm that is why we say them as triploblastic organisms they are triploblastic because they are germinal layer they have three germinal layer ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm is it clear then their body they have a special circulatory system that is called as water vascular system they have a radiating canals along the canals when we when the water enters along the canals they have the fan mouth similarly the water is also getting circulated okay then we have digestive system what type of digestive system they have they have a complete digestive system okay, that means it has mouth and anus separately then excretion for the purpose of excretion and respiration they have small tube like structure that is called as tube feet okay an example which are the examples that we have studied we have studied the examples like starfish what is the scientific name of starfish that is astreus or starfish the correct scientific name is astreus then we have sea urchin and sea cucumber these are the examples for phylum echinodermata then we will study about the next to phylum okay this is the last phylum i am going to discuss in today's class that is phylum mollusca okay phylum mollusca and these molluscs they are generally
Next phylum we are studying is about phylum Mollusca. And phylum Mollusca, it is the second largest phylum, which is the first one. First is phylum Arthropoda, then we have the second largest phylum, that is phylum Mollusca. Okay, and coming to their habitat, molluscans they are aquatic, okay, that might be fresh water or that might be sea water or marine, they are generally aquatic, their habitat, what is their habitat? They are aquatic, that means they live in water, okay, molluscans they are generally aquatic. Now, coming to phylum mollusca, the basic level of organization, we have organ system, they have organ system, they are the triple, I am not going to explain again for that triploblastic, they are the coelomates and they have bilateral symmetry, which is already taught you, which I have already taught you what is organ system, what are triploblastic, what are coelomates and bilateral symmetry. Coming to the body of molluscan, inside the body they have, the why they have got the name as mollusca is, mollusca is nothing but soft body animal. Okay, what type of body do they have? Soft body. But in case of mollusca, they are inner body. So consider they have a body this way. They have a body in this way. Where they have outer shell outer shell which is hard okay they have a outer shell which is hard but the inner body these are the inner body present this inner body is very soft that is why they have got the name as mollusca or soft bodied animals okay they are the soft bodied animals or you can call them as molluscans now i have told you they have a outer bear, outer body outer shell that is very hard in nature and we call it as hard shell which is made up of what is this hard shell made up of it is made up of calcium carbonate what is it made up of calcium carbonate Okay, it is made up of calcium carbonate. You have heard about snail. They are outer as soon as you touch the snail, what happens? They move inside the shell. Okay, they get enclosed inside the shell. Now this outer shell, for what purpose it is used? For the purpose of protection. For the purpose of protection. Okay, then inner body, it has feet or food for the movement. Then it has hump like structure where all the organs, internal organs, that is their digestive system, respiratory system, circulatory system, all it is enclosed in this hump. Okay? And it has a mantle. We call it as mantle. Okay? This is about the body structure. What do they have? They are outer body. They have hard shell. Okay? That means for the purpose of protection, if there is any danger, the animal will be moving inside the shell and they get enclosed. Clear? Then they have a small muscular foot, soft foot, which helps in movement or the locomotion. And it has a hump. That hump structure consists of all the internal organs, that is, their digestive organ, their circulatory organ, respiratory organ, all that are present in the hump region. Okay? And then it's coming to their circulation. Okay, what their body, we have studied about their body. And they have a digestive system which is complete. They have a complete digestive system. They have a complete digestive system and circulation that is open type. What is open type of circulation? When the blood flows by the heart, they have the cells and tissues.
circulation. They have open type of circulation. When the blood is pumped, the blood uh, when the blood is pumped by the heart, it will be directly reaching the cells and tissues. Okay. Then coming to the next one, that is for the purpose of respiration, they have uh, structure called as gills. They respire through gills. Respiration they respire through gills. This is about the phylum mollusca and example for mollusca you can write example as snail 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 is an example for mollusca and then op octopus octopus these are the example for phylum mollusca and there are number of examples which comes under your animal kingdom under your ncrt but for now if you know this structure it is more than enough then we start with the offline classes our first pc regular classes we will study in detail about these phylums where till now we have discussed about phylum polyphyla phylum cylindrata there is one more phylum added to your first pc syllabus that is phylum Tinophora, which you have not studied in an IELTS standard, which I have not covered here with Amaya uh, also, that will be studied in our first PUC. Okay, that is phylum Tinophora. Okay, then we have studied the next one: Platyhelminthes, Ascelminthes, Alinida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, and then Echinodermata. In the next level, there is only one phylum remaining under the uh, non coordinates Okay, that is uh, Hemichordata, which you have not studied in the IELTS standard, but I will give you a small introduction about a chemi coordinate and in next classes we will be studying about the phylum uh, what is beta okay, we will be studying about coordinates in detail about the coordinates and we will be studying about the what is beta okay for today's class we have studied about the phylum that is we have studied three phylums all together arthropoda echinodermata and mollusca small part of chemi coordinates and next we will discuss about the coordinates in the next class for today's class, I hope you have understood. If you have any doubt, you can add it on the comment section. If you want me to repeat any files, I will repeat or we will end up with today's session. So that's clear. Then we will wind up for today's session. In the next class, we will study about the remaining finals. Thank you.